Following the conclusion of the global conflict that was World War II, the United States of America decided to ensure that they remain armed and ready for combat, especially with the advent of the Cold War between themselves and the so-called enemy behind the Iron Curtain. Consequently, the US flooded the seas and oceans with multiple warhead carriers that would ensure the United States' dominance within a decade. Feast your eyes on the ballistic nuclear missile submarines that are capable of wiping out multiple cities at a time. Some are even able to destroy entire nations as well. Powerful and full of ammunition, these quiet submarines are amongst the most powerful and dangerous in the world. With their megatons of nuclear firepower and with their Ohio submarines, the US potentially has the world in a chokehold. Capable of carrying large submarine-launched ballistic missiles, these are potentially the most deadly weapons in existence today. Let's take a look at exactly when and why these missiles were created, what exactly they are and what they're capable of, how they work and what the future holds for these powerful super weapons. Back in 1979, in the midst of the Cold War between USA and Russia, the US government launched what would become the largest submarine in the US at that time. Massive and powerful in all forms, this submarine had an 18,000-ton displacement and an arsenal capable of wiping out an entire nation in one go. The launch of this nuclear warhead carrier was created following the peak of the space race between both parties in the aforementioned Cold War. Following this race to the stars, these parties turned their attention to something closer to home, the creation of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Upon the development of these weapons, it became clear who the most dominant party was, and that was thanks to the US's nuclear ballistic missiles and their more than worthy carriers. Most prominent of these were the Ohio-class ballistic submarines, some of the stealthiest yet most powerful submarines in the world. Of the 14 that are in existence today, four of these have been converted to missile carriers that are capable of releasing 150 conventionally armed cruise missiles against any target they wish to eradicate from the world. These third-generation submarines were created just so they can carry the next coming generation of launchable ballistic missiles. This was due to the fact that these missiles were getting more developed over the years. In the coming years, these missiles were built with longer and wider dimensions due to the fact that they carry multiple warhead re-entry vehicles, while also extending their range, especially as older submarines, such as the George Washington-class submarines, were unable to carry these new and improved Poseidon and Trident series of missiles. As such, these 14 Ohio-class submarines that we mentioned earlier carry more than half of the United States of America's nuclear arsenal on them thereby making them some of the most powerful and destructive weapons ever invented by humans. These 170-meter-long subs are capable of carrying Trident submarine-launched ballistic missiles, also known as SLBMs. These missiles are capable of hitting targets that are more than 7,000 miles away, depending on the load. Once this Trident missile is launched from the underwater sub, it breaks up into eight independent re-entry vehicles that carry anything between a 100 to 475 kiloton warhead in them. As such, it comes as no surprise that once these missiles are launched, a process that won't take up to one minute by the way, they could unleash a total of 192 warheads that could totally destroy and annihilate up to 24 cities in one go. No wonder the enemies of the US are weary of their Western rivals. They basically have the ammunition to unleash an apocalypse within one minute. Even the closest competitor to these subs, that's the Russian Typhoon class, doesn't come close. Although it is larger than the American Ohio-class submarines with 20 ballistic missile tubes, it's still not as destructive as the Ohio-class subs that carry up to 24 missiles. Although other countries such as China, Russia, France, the UK and India also have their own ballistic missile submarines, they aren't packing the same amount of heat as their American counterparts. Upon hearing about the alarming destructive powers that roam around in the seas, one would actually wonder why the Americans would build such a tremendous monster. Perhaps they intend to strike hard and perhaps most importantly, first. 
Furthermore, it may also be advantageous to have these subs lurking in the ocean, because it makes them harder for their enemies to track, especially when compared to how easy it might be to find land-based missile launchers. As such, you can imagine that these weapons would definitely discourage those who want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the US, thereby diffusing any wars or other conflicts before these frightful missiles are even launched. I don't know about you, but if that doesn't ooze power, I don't know what will. As we alluded to earlier, these unstoppable scourges of the American Navy were replacements for five classes of ballistic missile submarine fleets collectively known as the 41 for Freedom. Coming with a displacement of more than 18,000 tons submerged, these new and improved subs are the largest submarines to ever serve in the US Navy, and the third largest ever built when compared to the Typhoon-class submarines and the Borai-class subs. Each one of these Ohio-class subs are named after several states in the US, well, except the Henry S. Jackson submarine. Either way, either one of these ships will receive its orders to launch an attack through a very low-frequency radio transmission. And while the submarine targets aren't fixed or pre-targeted, something that you'd find in fixed silos, you'd find that the reason these submarines could launch their missiles within a minute is because their target's coordinates could be entered in a quick and rapid manner. You'd also find that these submarines can launch the advanced Trident missiles, which are new and improved versions of the Poseidon submarine-launched ballistic missiles, just as we alluded to earlier. Further to that, these subs are now armed with the much more powerful Trident D-5 missiles, which have a greater range by a 50% factor, and are much more accurate than others, making them perfect for the precise targeting of military installations. This is a far cry from the basic Trident 1 C-4 missiles that were found in the first eight Ohio-class subs that hit the waters in the 80s. You can barely imagine a better first-strike weapon than that. Aside from being compatible with these deadly missiles, the Ohio-class subs come with four 21-inch tubes that can launch Mark 48 torpedoes. These are American heavyweight submarine-launched torpedoes that were designed to sink deep-diving nuclear-powered submarines and other high-performance surface ships as well. Interestingly enough, it's believed that these torpedoes are primarily used for self-defense. Interestingly enough, you'd rarely find that these submarines are actually used to stalk and launch attacks on enemy ships and subs. Instead, you'd find that they actually stalk around quietly so that they could move around undetected. And if you think that these submarines must endure stops regularly, you'd find that the submarine can carry on for ages thanks to its nuclear reactor, which is based on the 240 megawatt General Electric S8G reactor. That's a mouthful. This nuclear reactor provides enough energy to two 35,000 HP turbines, which power the submarine's 8 meters in diameter propeller, and also gives the ship the ability to travel at cruising speeds of up to 23 knots, which is close enough to 23 miles an hour in a stealthy manner. In fact, the design of these propellers is still considered to be a state secret in the US today. It's thanks to these features that the Ohio-class submarines are able to continue with their quiet trek in the seas. Each of these Ohio-class submarines travel with two crews aboard them. Made up of 154 crew members in total, it's made up of officers and personnel that are either in the gold or blue rank. With each group taking turns manning the submarine as they sneak around in the water, they manage to stay underwater for a period of 70 to 90 days, with the record for maintaining this course being 140 days, a record set by the USS Pennsylvania. As of today, it's estimated that nine of these Ohio-class submarines are patrolling the Pacific Ocean, with their base being in Bangor, Washington, while another five are based in Kings Bay, Georgia, so that they can patrol the Atlantic Ocean. It can be said that this fleet of submarines are being kept at what could be considered a low number because of the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, START, signed by the Americans and the Soviet Union while it was still in existence back in 1991. Due to this treaty, both nations were compelled to downsize their force. However, rather than getting rid of some of their older sea vessels, the US Navy decided to refurbish four of their Ohio-class submarines into cruise missile launchers so that they can carry out standard attacks against an enemy's ground and sea targets. 
About two decades down the line, a new and improved START treaty was signed in 2011, and in accordance with this new agreement, further limits were imposed on the number of deployed nuclear weapons. As such, the current plan being implemented by the US Navy is to keep 12 Ohio-class submarines which carry about 20 Trident missiles in play, thereby keeping a total of 240 of these terrifying missiles in the waters for the time being. This means that there would be about 1,090 warheads coursing the waters today. These submarines will run their course until the end of the current decade, and with any hope they will get some more upgrades before they are replaced by perhaps a more powerful replacement, which is currently known as the Columbia class, believed to cost somewhere around four to six billion dollars being put together by 2031 and coming with new nuclear reactors that won't require expensive maintenance costs thereby making them easy to serve the United States of America until the latter years of the 21st century. This brings our video to an end. Do you know of any other powerful superweapons owned by the Americans? Are they weapons that linger underneath the water as well, or are they ground weapons? Please tell us all about them in the comment section. Remember to like and subscribe as well. Until next time, 